of Project 2025, and I've read inserts of Project 2025. No, I haven't. Actually, I haven't heard about it at all. No, I haven't heard about it. I just heard Project 2025 was something that wasn't for us or something to try to eliminate us slowly but surely. I could be wrong, but I know it ain't nothing good for us. Hello, my name is Tyrone Howard, professor of education at UCLA. And what I'd like to bring to your attention are some of the concerning and disturbing aspects of Project 2025 that we in the black community should be concerned about. Federal education policy should be limited and ultimately the Federal Department of Education should be eliminated. Outrageous. That's just complete nonsense. There's no clarity here as to what this really means. Are we eliminating resources? Are we eliminating things? And who is this being eliminated for? There's already a shortage of resources that young black kids get. What are we going to do if we don't provide the same education resources for everyone? I think Project 2025 is something that's going to set us back about 20 years. Wow. I don't think enough people are educated on just how bad this 2025 thing is. Any discussions around race and racism are now being eliminated, which to me is erasing a core part of our history. Black history is just not black history, it's actual the history, it's the history, it's not just black history, you know, because you can't, you can't go back in history and not find black people. You're trying to erase the history but you're not willing to necessarily erase the legislation that holds us down on a day-to-day -day basis. Got it. <laughs> Insane, okay, cool. That's a, that's a wicked game that they're playing. I feel like they're trying to just disintegrate everything and I don't appreciate that. Anymore. No, this is crazy. This is actually crazy. This is worse than the other one. It's overwhelming. Um, I can't believe someone actually took the time to put together this document that is it's absurd. It's absurd. The death penalty has always been highly problematic because a disproportionate number of people who are on death row are black men. This would ensure their instant death. No, I don't vote for genocide. I don't vote for genocide. I don't vote for black men being executed inappropriately and untimely. I don't vote for any of that, never have. I don't believe in the death penalty personally. No, I feel what he's saying. No, it's just not ours, it's his. This is the same group that believes that the lives of, you know, would-be children are considered. And then to become, like, judicial hitmen, right, it's like, it's, it's crazy because it's, you, you can't use the same God for both of them. Um, we have a lot of individuals who are obviously doing, you know, time in, in prison in our jail systems without having gone through the proper channels of uh, being allowed a you know, proper due process. What it does really is just let black men know that we're not really, we're not respected, we're, not, we're still not looked at as human. It's still, it's, it's, this is still like an extermination. I think the only thing that really scares me about this is the conservative administration should do everything possible to obtain the finality for the 44 prisoners currently on death row. That seems to say even if they're innocent, kill them. That's scary. Liberal states have now become sanctuaries for abortion tourism. Health and Human Services should use every available tool, including the cutting of funds, to ensure that every state reports exactly how many abortions take place. It seems like they're trying, they're trying to cover every door to make sure a woman doesn't have the right to choose what happens with her body. And um, I think, I think it's, it's, it's just crazy. I feel like they should have their choice of how they want to treat their bodies and do what they want with their bodies, so it shouldn't be up to no government to do that. This is an important issue that we should all be concerned about because women's rights are being taken away. This takes us to illegal and backroom abortions where women put their lives at risk in ways that we haven't seen for centuries in this country. They've been through a great deal of suffrage, so this is just another thing to add on to more of that suffrage. and. Uh, I feel like they should have their choice of how they want to treat their bodies and do what they want with their bodies, so it shouldn't be up to no government to do that. No, I'm not, in, I'm not, I'm not, this is not something I want to vote for at all. 
I wouldn't vote for it. But I want my daughters to be able to grow up. They're 6 to 12. I want them to be able to grow up and have freedom of rights. He's already said he wants to do a national abortion ban. So this is just proof positive. Secretaries should phase out all existing income-driven repayment plans by making new loans, including consolidation loans, ineligible. There should be no loan forgiveness. This means that your loans will be due soon, and many of them with interest and penalty and fees, so more money out of your pocket. Why is that important? Because black people are twice as likely to have larger student loan debts than people from other races, which means that it only delays the ability to purchase homes and other wealth building strategies. No loan forgiveness is its pretty scary. If there's no forgiveness and if all the borrowers should have to repay their loans, some people are not in a position to do that. And I don't think a lot of people can recover from the debt that college is putting on people. So, you know, you'd be putting kids in a position where it's, it's, it's almost impossible for them to win. The next administration should work with Congress to amend Title VII to prohibit Equal Employment Opportunity Commission from collecting EEO-1 data and any other social classifications and employment for both private and public workplaces. What this means is that we will no longer have protections in the workplace that prevent discrimination, racism, or unfair treatment of people of color. Wow. Oh yeah, we can't have that. We can't have that at all. Egregious, overwhelming, outrageous, unfair. That's how I describe it. May I speak candidly? It's basically a handbook for slavery. I think that we need to vote, get out and spread the word to make sure that this doesn't happen. I used to think that black men could never be presidents of companies like Xerox and Microsoft, but a black man became the president. This is rolled back, rolling back all these things that were already established. We should find more ways to be more inclusive, men of color, women of color. I can't imagine an administration that would take us back. I could never support it. Repeal harmful health policy, and that's under the Obama and Biden administration, such as Medicare shared saving programs and the Inflation Reduction Act. I never thought that we would come to a time like this in America. You know, just sad. The Inflation Reduction Act basically is a provision that will have an impact on Medicare, which would mean higher prescription costs for seniors and more money for Big Pharma, plain and simple. I'm in a wheelchair and I do got Medicare. So they're trying to take Medicare for us. I would be asked out because I don't have no care for my wheelchair. Honestly, based on this, like honestly, it, thinking about, again, not even thinking necessarily about myself, but you know, my grandmother, my grandfather, my grandfather specifically, um, this would directly affect him, which would be insane. So what it means to me is poor people that have pre-existing conditions are in a world of trouble if Trump gets in office. I mean, for him to, to say he want to get rid of Obamacare and they ask him the question, what's your plan? He said he has a concept. That's like, that's the scariest thing ever. And I'm an asthmatic, you know? Like, I, I know what it's like to be suffering at night because, you know, you're wheezing and you don't have your inhaler. And I mean, come on now, like, it's hard to, um, I guess, uh, express like the, almost like the anger. I'm a little shaking a little bit, you know? Reading, this, this is definitely the most important election ever. The corporate income tax rate should be reduced to 18%. So that means the, the, the people that make less money gonna pay higher taxes? No, it don't make me wanna vote for Trump. What this means is less taxes and greater profit for large corporations and fewer wages and less income for everyday workers. We already see a massive gap between what workers take home and what large corporations take home. This is only widen that gap. So the hard working people get less and the people that don't work as much get everything. If you're uh, middle class or lower, you barely make it ends meet for real. 
The people with the most money should pay the most money. I mean, that's like common sense, right? It sounds like they're stopping, or really they're adding more money to their pockets by stopping us from being able to save money. This is wrong. This is just wrong. It shouldn't be this way. But they don't care about the little people. They just care about just making more money, whatever that looks like. I would say, take your time to read what they're pushing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's 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 it's, it's really cool to watch a debate and hear a, cool, a cute little tagline from time to time. But when you see what the agenda is really about, you know what I'm saying, you're probably gonna think twice. It's not good for the black man at all. Basically any man of color, it's not. And I would tell them to educate themselves on Project 2025. At this point, I don't even know if there's a message I could give to them, right? Like, it's blatant, it's obvious. What I usually tell them is, you're selling your, yourself back into slavery for a few dollars. Because most black men, when they talk about they're going to vote for Trump, always talk about dollars. Everybody just thinking that Trump was a good president from EDD, PPP, that Trump was going to look out for the blacks. I mean, look, I don't think Trump really honestly cares about anybody back there um, anyway. My plan to vote this next uh, presidential election, absolutely. People die for the actual right to vote. So if you have a chance to vote, you should. This is, this is my second time voting and, uh, since I've been uh, free. And uh, to me and anybody around me uh, that knew what I went through, fighting to get home, and know what's, what's going on, like we have to vote, we, we just have to vote. When I grew up, my grandfather was from the South and it was very hard for them to vote. So no matter what, vote, we have to vote. It's important, I don't care if you gotta stand in line five, six hours, vote. And at this point, it's really not even a, 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 about politics, it's about character. Like the dude is just a, a horrible person, right? And that's what it boils down to for me. It's beyond politics at this point. So many elections before, black men, women didn't vote very much. We have to vote at this election. It's gonna be a game changer for all of us. I use the term, I have to stop this insanity. Not only am I gonna vote, but I'm gonna encourage all my friends to do so.